Hey YouTube, it's Mike Pang Gangster, and today let's talk a little bit about well, Foot Champions is coming up, but let's talk a little bit about basically Ultimate Team. I know a lot of people uh, recently have been wondering what's happening with the uh, content that EA is giving us. Seems to be a little bit boring, and that is true. We aren't getting much lately. We did get a good pack today, though. Uh, we ended up getting a mega pack. Um, we, but we haven't been getting anything else really. Besides a few weird SBCs, uh, upgradable SBCs. For example, today we got the one with the um, a lone icon, which I, I don't know. I feel this is a little bit crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's a 10 game loan um, for a base icon, which again, of course, if you want to try out icon stuff like that, I mean, why not? You could do it. But I mean, an 84 rated squad for a 10 game loan. I don't know. I feel like this is just something that you should skip. Um, I'm just not too crazy about it. Uh, again, another one that I'm not too crazy about too is the 77 double upgrade. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe because the market or the, the way we're getting cards this year, it's different. That maybe this is actually worth it. I, I'm not sure. But looking at the fact that you have to put... Uh, is it six rares? I think it's six rares, right? Is it six rares? Yeah, six rares to receive um, two rares back. 77 plus, right? So for people that don't know, like rares start at 75. So all you're skipping is 75s and 76s. So you're putting six rares to skip two rares, okay? When you could just go ahead and go do the regular gold upgrade here and put 11 non-rares, 11 commons, where you'll still get two rares. The only difference is that you have the 75s and 76s that are going to be implemented into your packs, right? But to be honest with you, either you, like... I feel like doing this one is better than the other one just because the comments are just cheaper in general. Uh, it's going to cost you less money to do this. And at the end of the day, if you're lucky, like you just got to get lucky and hit something with the gold upgrade. So I just don't get the point of doing the 77 double. Okay. Now we did have the other one, the 82 triple, which again, it's not the best because you have to implement an 83 rated squad into it. But because 83s are pretty much this card right now, uh, going for, going for like uh, 700 coins, uh, whatever, like the SBC itself goes for about 9,000 coins or whatever the case may be, taking a chance on one one hit, why not? I mean, hey, if you hit, you hit, right? Again, there were some decent ones like the Team of the Week upgrade, which good was good for sure. Uh, I, the challenges were okay. We did get decent packs. Like I said, today we got the, um, the Mega Pack. And the Marquis matchup, uh, we should be getting that tomorrow, right? So those are things that you should do. Of course, it's also the player SBCs and stuff like that. Again, this a lot of it's going to depend on how you're building your squad and all that stuff. I, I feel like there are certain players that is a must. For example, Alex Garcia, uh, you got like still 29 days on him. And I'm going to show you my team and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a build squad there because my team is going for around, I'm on PC, so... The price is very, very different on PC than it is on like PlayStation and Xbox. But the team goes for a little over 300k. On PC, it's a little over 400 because, again, the PC prices are way more expensive. But I'll show you guys the team and I'll show you guys the price if you guys want to set up a 433 the way I have it, right? Um, I just feel like Garcia, even if you're not setting up a 433 that I have, for example, I just feel like Garcia is just one of those SB, player SBC you should do because he's so cheap and he's good in game. Um, same thing goes with Marcus Turam. I have them both in my team. Um, let me just show you guys real, real quick the team so you guys can get an understanding of like um, what the squad looks like. So, so this is my squad. Okay, so this squad here right now, just to guys give you like an idea of how much it costs. Give me a sec. So as you can see, this is the squad, right? And you can see on, on PlayStation it says three hundred thirty-four thousand. On uh, PC it says four hundred twenty-eight. Um, so yeah, you, you get the idea. Give or take, it's a little like in the low 300s for PlayStation Xbox and a little over 400 for the PC version, right? But I just feel like it's a very, very strong uh, team set up correctly uh, for uh, your first weekend league. So what I like about the team, of course, there are certain players, like I said, there's two SBCs that you're going to have to do if you want them and if you want to set up the team exactly as my team is, right? Um, again, there's also two evolutions. So for example, I ended up picking this girl, Feller. I really like her a lot. I think she has pretty crazy stats. She has good. Um, she has a few positions that she could play. Uh, striker in the right wing position. She also has a few play styles that are decent. Of course, when you would have done the uh, evolution, you would have got the power shot plus. But she did have already rapid, first touch, 
uh, Quick Step, and Travella, which are four very used uh, playstyles. Okay, uh, Rose. She got the inside forward as a right wing, and she's got the false nine with the advanced forward as a striker. I don't rec really recommend her as a striker. I recommend her more as a winger. She's very, very quick, as you can see, 91 uh, pace, so acceleration and sprint speed. She's very short also, so she moves very, very, very quickly. She has um, a three-star weak foot, which is not the best, but, guys, eventually we're going to get an evolution where she's going to have, like, a four-star. Now, you don't have to go ahead and go make her as your evolution player or Hernandez, but I'm just showing you guys the team that I have. So up front, for example, we have Feller, we have the SBC Turam, and we have Barcola. Bar Barcola, whatever, if I'm saying his name. I feel like the attack is very, very strong. So far, I'm in Division 3. I mean, this team got me all the way there with no problems. I, I really think the team is really, really strong up front. In the midfield, it's probably the strongest part of the team. We've got Sabister, Atana Bomati, and again, the SBC uh, Garcia, which I believe everybody should do it. Of course, the most expensive card in the team is... Uh, Bomati, bon which I believe she's cracked this year again. Last year she was fucking amazing. This year she's even better. It's just my personal opinion. She plays the um, shadow striker in my in my formation. Um, so again, if you want to go look at the tactics, you could see in my old video where I show the tactics of this particular version I'm using. It's the exact same thing. I didn't change nothing. Um, so that's the midfield. Very, very strong. In defense, again, very solid defense. We have on a battle here which is probably the weakest part of the defense but she's still very very good then we have pavard we have the evil hernandez frick pong which i believe is one of the best wing backs in this game uh so far very very good on the ball very very quick everything goalie does it really matter it's mostly for chemistry i, I guess cobell does the, does the job for uh anna what i do most of the time is i basically sub in either davis or wow well, what's happening here or molina molina I don't know what's happening with my game, but but anyways, so that is what it is. Now, for the lack of content from EA, um, should we be disappointed? I personally think not, and I'm going to explain why. I believe that the stuff, the content that we're getting right now, even if it's not, we're not getting as much as we want, I think it's actually a good thing that they slow things down. And the reason for that is because it maintains a better uh, market, first of all, because it stabilizes it and actually gives it a chance to actually go up in price. So we don't have that crazy, crazy market right, that just basically crashes instantly, right? So we have a more stabilized market with less um, content arriving, right? So if they basically pace themselves at a slower pace, I feel like the game is going to have more value as we, you know, as longer. It, the value of the cards are going to last longer, right? That's what I'm trying to get to. So I, I, I am okay with how the stuff are coming out at the moment. I know... There are certain things that there's, you know, rumors. Maybe they're not coming out with evolutions because it could be a bug and they don't know how to fix it yet or something like that. That's one of the rumors I heard. I don't know if they're true. It could be true. I heard a lot of people complaining some of their evils didn't, didn't, they didn't get the evil that basically they were supposed to get, like the upgrade and stuff like that. Maybe they did a mistake. I wouldn't be surprised. It's EA Sports. But like, again, I said, once the weekend league starts this weekend, of course, in a couple of days, two days, whatever it is, um, again, the game... Is gonna get back to normal right because the last two weeks especially for the people that have been playing since the uh, early edition right uh we haven't had much to do besides you know like grinding the division rivals right i mean people grinded most likely their squad battles because i feel like this year is very, very important to do squad battles because the rewards are cracked um but other than that most people they only played uh division rivals right so now that the weekend league arrives uh We'll go back to the old routine of the, the old FIFAs and the FC, FC24, whatever you want to call it, um, that we basically start to, like, you know, add that same routine. The weekend comes, we play weekend league. We most likely also qualify, right? A lot of people used to play weekend league on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. They would requalify or something like that, whatever, depending. Everybody has their own way of doing it, but a lot of people were doing that, right? Then, of course, during the week, you got to play your division rivals, this year, Division Rivals recommends 15 wins. Well, not 15 wins, but 45 points for you to get the rank 1 reward. So, you know, you got to have pretty much four days, Monday until like Thursday, most likely, to play your weekend leagues to get your, your, your wins and stuff like that. And most likely in there, you're going to want to also play some squad battles and stuff like that. So, again, we're, we're going to get everything that we need. Like, there's going to be a lot of stuff happening. And, and it's good that it's actually uh, been paced uh, at a slower pace for the first two weeks. Because once the weekend league starts, like I said... We get back to like the old grind where we're pretty much doing something every day, right? Because like I said, 
uh, with the divisional rivals being fi uh, 45 points this year uh, during the week, a lot of people are going to be like, you know, stuck in playing their division rival games. And again, also a lot of people are going to want to play their squad battles because, like I said, the rewards are good. And then when the weekend league comes, of course, everybody wants to play the weekend league, right? I mean, weekend league rewards this year are cracked. They're amazing. Just hope the gameplay is going to be good in the weekend league. I'm a little bit afraid. I've been playing on PC. I have some days where it's good or some hours where it's good and some some hours or some days where it's just fucking bad, man. Like the servers are trash. The lag is fucking heavy. Hopefully when weekend league comes, we're not going to go through that again like every year. And, uh, you know, we hope for the best. Anyways, that's the video. That's the team. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck in your first weekend league. Enjoy the game, guys. Try to take the game uh, as fun as possible. Don't take it too seriously. Remember, it's just a game. Try to have fun. Try to play with cards that you enjoyed playing with. Try to play in formations that you want to play with, right? Um, I know a lot of people are in this meta of five in the back, guys. Five in the back is not as overpowered as you think. It's only overpowered when a person knows exactly what they're doing. I notice a lot of people, I've encountered a lot of five in the backs that have no clue what they're doing. They're just basically playing five in the back because some YouTuber like me, for example, but not me because I didn't tell nobody to play five in the back, but you know, an example, told them five in the back is the most OP formation. It's not. Guys, there's so many formations out there that are really, really strong this year. A lot of it has to do with what type of team you're using, what type of players and roles they could play in the formations. That's what's overpowered this year. It's not the five in the back. Five in the back could be beaten. There's ways. Go look at the pros play. A lot of them are smashing five in the back. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.